The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company. Before we join the Great Gildersleeve this evening, we have some exciting news for you from Kraft. It's more news about a new salad oil, Kraft Salad Oil, the first salad oil ever offered for your home use by the makers of all those wonderful Kraft prepared dressings. Wait till you use this new oil in one of your salad dressings or baking recipes. For Kraft Salad Oil is more than just a new oil, it's a lighter bodied salad oil that blends perfectly with other ingredients, adds new magic to every recipe it's used in. That's because it's not just refined. It's superfined by Kraft. Tomorrow when you shop, be sure to get a bottle of lighter-bodied, superfined Kraft salad oil. Well, it's late afternoon in the great Gildersleeve's town of Summerfield, the hour when the menfolk are closing their places of business, while at home, pleasant aromas waft out of the kitchen windows and float tantalizingly down the streets. Well, somebody's having pot roast. Hope it's us. Mr. Gildersleeve? Yeah, Bronco. Hello, Bronco. Uh, wait a minute. I'll walk home with you. Yeah, all right. You fine son-in-law. Oh, how was your day, Mr. Gildersleeve? Yeah, fine. How was yours, my boy? Ah, great. Good. Hey, Bronco! Well, little Leroy. Hello, Leroy. Hi. Yeah, isn't this wonderful? The gathering of the clan. Link arms, men. We'll march home together. The camels are coming, tra la 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 The camels are coming, tra la 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 The camels are coming, tra la 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 in here. Yeah, the camels are coming, Bertie. Camels? Is the circus in town? No, Bertie. The circus is right here in the living room. Hello, Marge. Hello, darling. Hello, Leroy. Hi. I dropped in Dad's bookstore today, Marge, and he said he'd like to stop by and see the twins on his way home. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes, indeed. We haven't seen Mr. Thompson for quite a while. He's a fine fellow. Uh, is Mrs. Thompson coming, Bronco? Mother? Oh, no, she's home. Good. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I imagine she has dinner to get, too. Well, I'm going to run upstairs and see the twins, Marge. Oh, why don't you bring them down while I straighten up the living room a little? Yeah, I'll help you, Marjorie. Gee, I'm disappointed that Mrs. Thompson isn't coming, too. Yeah, so am I. But I'll try to get over it. <laughs> now, Unky. Then I'm delighted that Mr. Thompson's coming by. I've always felt a little sorry for him. He's such a kindly man. Yeah. I wonder if he's always been absent-minded. Or if he got punchy living with that drill sergeant. <laughs> Uncle Mort. Yeah, there he is. I'll get it. Yeah, I'll get it, Bertie. You stick to the pot roast. <laughs> Your father's here, Bronco. Coming, Marge, honey. Well, hello, Mr. Thompson. Oh, there you are, Gildersleeve. You come right in. Glad to see you. Thank you. I knew this was the right house. I lose my bearings, you know. Yeah, this is the house, all right. Oh, I knew it was, because the other three weren't. <laughs> a little late, am I? No, oh, no, not at all. You remember Marjorie? Oh, yes, my daughter-in-law. She married my son, Bronco. <laughs> you, brother. His bearings aren't getting any better. How have you been, Marjorie? Hello, Father Thompson. It's nice of you to come by. Well, I haven't been by for some time now. What's going on? Oh, hello, Mr. Thompson. Well, can this be one of the twins? <laughs> My, how they've grown. <laughs> Is he kidding? I don't know. Mr. Thompson, this is Leroy. Oh, yes, Leroy. He lives next door. No, 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 Mr. Thompson. He's my twin. Yeah, I mean, my nephew. <laughs> you know, he's got me doing it. Oh, here's Bronco with the twins. Uh, hello, Dad. Well, hello, son. Hello, baby. <laughs> Gillisley, these are my grandchildren. Yes, yes, I know, Mr. Thompson. 
Do you hear that, babies? You're your grandfather's grandchildren. What do you think of that? <laughs> she likes you, Mr. Thompson. Well, most babies do. Uh-oh. What's the matter with her, Marge? Oh, they're getting hungry. Uh, bring them out in the kitchen, Brock, and I'll fix their formula. Oh, sure. I'll see you later, boy. All right, Brock. <laughs> hey, I'm hungry, too. What about my formula? Yeah, well, we'll be eating soon, Leroy. Better be soon, or I'll have to wash again. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Thompson, how about staying for dinner? We're having pot roast. No, thanks, Gildersleeve. I have to get home to dinner. Mrs. Thompson is waiting. You know, by the way, how is Mrs. Thompson? Oh, Martha's about the same. Yeah. Charming woman. Who? <laughs> Your wife, Mrs. Thompson. Oh, yes. Well, I better go home. I didn't get to see much of the twins, though, Gildersleeve. Well, Mr. Thompson, you should come more often and stay longer. I'd like to. I've always been very fond of you, Gildersleeve. But you know how it is with you and Martha. He, me and Martha? Yes. You two just don't seem to hit it off. Well, Mr. Thompson, where did you ever get that idea? From Martha. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Where did she ever get the idea? Why, I think Mrs. Thompson is a... Yeah, I, I think she's a... Well, as I said a moment ago, a charming woman. Yes, that's what you said. You know, I've always gone out of my way to be cordial to Mrs. Thompson. Just to prove it, why don't you two come over soon? Tomorrow evening? Well, yes. You spend the evening with us and the twins. Oh, yes. They are my grandchildren, you know. Yeah, that's right. And uh, when you and Mrs. Thompson come, don't just drop in. Stay a while. Let's get acquainted. Gilda Steve, we'll take you up on that. We'll be over. Yeah, good. Yeah, excuse me, Mrs. Thompson. Telephone? Just tell Martha I'm on my way. Poor fellow. Well, I'd better sign these letters, close the water department, and get home. Yeah, I'm glad I invited Mr. Thompson over for dinner tonight. He's absent-minded, but he's good company. Say, I wonder if you'll forget to bring Mrs. Thompson. No, no such luck. Anybody here? You, Judge Hooker. Is the water buffalo still at the water hole? <laughs> yeah. Come in, Judge. There's still room for an old goat. Thank you, Gilda. How do you like the poppy in my lapel? Yeah, say, I'll have to get one, too. Saturday is poppy day, isn't it? Yes, but I got mine early. Gilda, old friend, wouldn't you like to improve your musical education? Yeah, Judge. Don't tell me you brought your flute with you. No. But guess what I have in my pocket? A hole? No, Gildy. I have tickets to the band concert in Kraft Park this evening. It's the opening of the season. Well, I'll have to hear it from my front porch, Judge. Oh? In fact, I doubt if I'll even hear it. Mrs. Thompson is coming over. Is she coming over? My sympathy. <laughs> Well, Judge, I'm doing it out of friendship for Mr. Thompson. He's put up with her for 30 years. I can put up with her for a couple of hours. A splendid thing to do, Gilda. Yeah, I think so. But you know how it is with me, Judge. If I do say so myself, I go out of my way to get along with people. It's a commendable attitude on your part. If only more people were like that. Well, you can't expect everybody to be perfect, Judge. Uh, no. <laughs> Well, I'm sorry you can't attend the concert with me. It's going to be a most interesting program. They've included my favorite number. You? Yeah. The whistler and his dog. I can whistle it for you. Yes, Judge, please. Judge, yeah, I'll hear it from my front porch. Bertie, the parlor looks very nice this evening. Yes, sir. When Miss Thompson comes in with those white gloves and runs her finger along the mantel, she ain't gonna find no dust. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Bertie. Let's everybody be on our toes. <gasps> I just remembered. What's the matter, Marjorie? Well, I better run up and put on that blouse she gave me. The one with the strawberries on it? Yes. Oh, my goodness. 
Anything special you want out of the kitchen this evening, Mr. Gilsey? Well, it would be nice to serve something around 10 o'clock. That's pretty well accepted as a hint to go home. Yes, sir. Would it be too much trouble to make some prune whip, Bertie? Mr. Thompson likes it. Oh, no, sir. That's easy. I just toss it in the mixer. Yeah, good. That and some coffee and cookies should round out the evening. Yes, sir. Yeah, by George, this is painless. I should have done this a long time ago, for Mr. Thompson's sake. Aunt! Yeah, what is it, Leroy? It's Friday night. Can I go to the movies? Leroy, this is the night the Thompsons are coming. I know. Can I go to the movies? <laughs> Leroy, don't you want to see Mr. and Mrs. Thompson? I've seen them. Yep. Please, Unc, let me go see the Batwoman. Well, you're all right, my boy. Go ahead. Keen. Thanks, Unc. Mm, no use punishing the boy. It's very nice of you to entertain Bronco's parents this evening. Bronco appreciates it, too. He knows his mother's a little difficult at times. No, Marjorie, I'm not really doing anything big. It'll all be over in an hour or two. Besides, it won't be bad with Mr. Thompson here. He's a dear. Uh-oh, here they are. I'll get it! Yeah. <laughs> Never mind, Bertie, I'll get it. We're here, Gildersleeve. Well, Mr. Thompson and Mrs. Thompson. Good evening, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> Come in. Come in. It's been so long since you've been over here. Hasn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, it's been entirely too long. My fault. Hello, Mother Thompson. Marjorie, my dear. I see you're wearing the blouse I gave you. Yes, I am. Well, still looks new. Apparently, you don't wear it often. Well, yeah, I... It's a little early for strawberries, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Shall we step into the parlor so I can close the door? Oh, I forgot, Gildersleeve. I left Martha's suitcase on the stoop. Yeah, well, bring you, you Martha's suitcase. <laughs> Edward conveyed your invitation to come and stay a while, Mr. Gildersleeve. Stay a while? Suitcase? Yo, yes. Come in, Mr. Thompson. Oh, I can't stay, Gildersleeve. In fact, I left the motor running. You did? Yes. I have to be out of town until tomorrow night. So Martha's accepting your invitation for us. What? Yeah, I mean, wonderful. Great. Isn't it? I'll bring Martha's suitcase in. Edward, let Mr. Gildersleeve carry it. He's big. Oh, yes. Yeah, I'm big. Big stoop. <laughs> you have a notion to carry it out the back way and keep running. Gildersleeve will be back in just a moment. It's lighter bodied. It's super fine. It's Kraft Salad Oil, the first salad oil ever offered for home use by the makers of all those wonderful Kraft prepared salad dressings. Yes, you women who pride yourselves on your own special homemade salad dressings now have something new and wonderful to work with. Now, you know in advance that any salad oil offered to you by Kraft is bound to be good. But Kraft salad oil is more than just a good oil. It's a new kind of oil, a lighter-bodied oil made to blend perfectly with other ingredients. That's because Kraft salad oil is not just refined, it's superfined by a special process created by Kraft. You'll find Kraft salad oil not only wonderful for your homemade salad dressings, but also for those grand chiffon cakes you bake. In fact, for every recipe you have that requires liquid shortening. So don't wait to try this new Kraft salad oil. Remember, it's lighter bodied. It's super fine. Get Kraft salad oil tomorrow at your grocer's. Get back to the great Gildersleeve. When he invited Marjorie's in-laws, the Thompsons, to come over and stay a while, he didn't expect Mrs. Thompson to bring her suitcase. But the water commissioner is inclined to look on the bright side, especially early in the morning. Oh, well. 
she'll only be here until this evening when Mr. Thompson gets back to town. He's already been here a whole night, and we hardly knew it. Of course, we were all asleep. Good morning, Miss Gilsey. Yeah, good morning, Bertie. Breakfast coming up. Yay. Good morning, Leroy. Oh, hi, Unc. Leroy, why are you gulping your prunes? I'm getting out of the house before Mrs. Thompson comes down. Leroy, that isn't hospitality. You shouldn't eat until everybody's seated. You wait for the rest of us and say good morning to Mrs. Thompson. I met her in the hall and said good morning. She made me go back and wash my ears. <laughs> yeah, probably a good thing she came. Stand up, Leroy. Here they come. Oh, for corn's sake. Do I have to salute? Leroy. <laughs> well, good morning, Mrs. Thompson. Good morning, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hello, Bronco. Marjorie. Good morning, Anki. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, where shall we seat, Mother? Why, opposite me, at the head of the table, of course. May I, Mrs. Thompson? Oh, thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Not at all. Fine day, isn't it? Leroy, I see you've eaten most of your prunes. Couldn't you wait for the rest of us? Well... Yeah, yeah, yeah Mr. Thompson, did you get a good night's rest? Uh, hardly. I hope the twins didn't keep you awake, Mother. It wasn't that, son. Mr. Gildersleeve, sleep is so essential to good health. Next time you buy, you should give more attention to the selection of your mattresses. You. <laughs> I'm sorry if you lost some sleep. Perhaps you can catch up on it tonight. Yeah, you'll be home in your own bed tonight. Leroy. Ouch! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, playful children. We always have a lot of fun at the breakfast table, Mrs. Thompson. Really? The breakfast table seems such a strange place to have fun. Yeah, you well. have. Here comes the breakfast. Good morning, Miss Thompson. Good morning, Bertie. Sorry I'm a little late, but I took special things with the breakfast this morning. Well, Bertie, bacon, eggs, cottage fried potatoes, waffles with parquet. Oh, boy. Yeah, it looks great, Bertie. Thank you, sir. And it's beautifully served, too, Bertie. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, Bertie's son cook. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Bertie. Yes, Miss Thompson? Don't you think your eggs would be fluffier if you beat in some cream? Yes, sir. And I stuck a fork in your waffles. I saw you. <laughs> mm. Mother, would you like to start passing things? Bronco, I'm instructing Birdie. Zeke. Now, Birdie, <laughs> the secret to light, tender waffles is having the waffle iron hot. Yes, am Excuse me, I got to go get the hot coffee. <laughs> <laughs> you? Birdie must have dropped something. Yeah, yes, well, will you excuse me a minute? Well, certainly, I what a noisy household. Yes, yes. Now, Bertie. Yes, sir? Yeah, I know Mrs. Thompson isn't the easiest person to get along with. But we'll try, won't we? The little family thinks your cooking is wonderful. You know that, don't you? Now, I'll help you pick up the pans and the silverware. Yeah, I know Mrs. Thompson's a little critical. She likes to tell us how to run things. Yes, sir. But we can put up with it for today. She'll be gone tonight. Yes, sir. Hey, Unc, the kid delivered a telegram. A telegram? Here, take these, Bertie. Yeah, let's see it, Leroy. Well, it's from Mr. Thompson. Mr. Thompson? Yeah, what does he say, Unc? He, he won't be able to pick up Mrs. Thompson until tomorrow night. <laughs> Bertie! <laughs> Body that Mrs. Thompson is. Now, Unky? You know, Archie, if it weren't for Mr. Thompson, I wouldn't put up with it. Well, yesterday wasn't so bad. After that breakfast episode. Well, that's because nearly everybody got out of the house. It's the first Saturday afternoon I've spent at the office this year. Mother Thompson is a dear woman. I'm sure she's just trying to help us all. Well. You're just sensitive, Unky. She hasn't once ruffled me. Marge, honey, the twins are away. All right, Bronco. I guess they're hungry. Yeah. Listen to that yell. Fine, healthy babies. Marjorie, Marjorie, did I hear you 
say the babies are hungry. Uh, yes, Mother Thompson. I'll feed them right away. Oh, good heavens. Surely you don't feed them every time they're hungry. Well, yes, that's demand feeding. I know, and I heartily disapprove. Oh? You, yeah, Mrs. Thompson, up to now, Marjorie's been very successful with the twins. Mr. Gildersleeve, are you implying that I know nothing about babies? You oh, no. Look at my son, Bronco. He was a scheduled baby. Well, either way, I... <laughs> You see, Mother Thompson, Bronco and My I... My dear Marjorie, you and Bronco are scarcely more than children yourself. Mrs. Thompson. Now, my dear, we'll put them on a schedule. I'll go up and abuse them. We'll feed them at the proper time. Anki, did you hear that? Yeah, Marjorie, control yourself. We've managed for two days. We can make it until Mr. Thompson picks her up tonight. Anki. Yes, Leroy? The kid was by again with another telegram. Oh, no. Well, let's open it. Another day. Oh, uh, can I go to a movie tonight? <laughs> yes, Leroy, and I'll go with you. Did I hear someone mention another telegram? Oh, yes, Mrs. Thompson. Mr. Thompson's delayed again. Where did he go, to South America? <laughs> no, Leroy. Well, this presents a problem. My canary has to be fed. Your canary? I left ample food, but now she'll have to be attended to. I don't feel I should leave her a home alone any longer. Well, that's no problem, Mr. Thompson. You run up and pack your bag, and I'll back the car out. Oh, <laughs> I wasn't planning to leave. You right? Here's the key to my house, Mr. Gildersleeve, and a quarter for some bird seed. Bird seed. And you might put fresh water in her cage. Fresh water. And canaries get terribly lonely. So stay and talk with her for a little while. <laughs> now she's got me talking to canaries. Hello, Peavy. Uh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. What can I do for you today? Peavy, I want some bird seed. How's that? <laughs> bird seed, Peavy. Oh, you have a bird on your hands, do you? Yeah, I'll say, and what a bird. We've had Mrs. Thompson on our hands for two days, and the end still isn't in sight. My, my. Now she wants me to take some bird seed to her house and feed her canary. <laughs> it isn't funny, Peavy. Yeah, I think it is. <laughs> Out of the goodness of my heart, I invited the Thompsons over for an evening. And then Mr. Thompson had to go out of town, and we've had Mrs. Thompson with us ever since. Mm, don't say. Well, you care for some aspirin along with your bird tea? <laughs> no, thanks, Peavy. I'll weather the storm. I'll do it for Mr. Thompson's sake. And here's your bird tea, Mr. Gildersleeve. Anything else? Well, you might give me a tall coat, Peavy. Yeah, well. Yeah, I think I'll sit a spell. I'm in no great hurry to get home. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Gildersleeve. Peavy's fine with you. Yes, he is. It's for you, Mr. Gildersleeve. For me? Yeah, oh, thanks, Peavy. Hello. Mr. Gildersleeve? You, yeah, Mrs. Thompson. Are you dawdling on the way? You, you, you dawdling? I phoned home and got no answer. Marjorie said I'd probably find you at the drugstore. Yeah, well, I'm here. So I see. Well, after you feed the birds, don't forget to cover the cage. Yo, yeah, I, I won't. Goodbye, Mrs. Thompson. Yeah, forget the coat, Peavy. Uh, Mrs. Thompson hustling you along, is she? No, Peavy. Mrs. Thompson may push everybody else around, but she isn't telling me what to do. No, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't even give me the key to the front door. I have to go through the kitchen. You? Yeah, empty milk bottles. Yeah, I wouldn't put up with this for one minute if it wasn't for Mr. Thompson. He's so thoughtful and considerate. Say, look at the dishes in the sink. You'd think she'd do those and put them away before she left. In a baloney ring on the dining room table. 
You are a housekeeper. Yeah, I wonder where the bird is. Oh, hello, Gildersleeve. What's that? <laughs> hello, Mr. Thompson. Mr. Thompson! Yes, you remember me, Gildersleeve. You know, I thought you were out of town. Uh, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Thompson, what are you doing in your easy chair with your shoes off, smoking a cigar? Have you been here all the time? Of course not, Gildersleeve. I had to go out and send a couple of telegrams. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Mr. Thompson, you don't know what I've gone through the last two days. Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> Sit down, Gildersleeve. Have a Coke and a cigar. Well, well, I may as well. Mr. Thompson, this was a sneaky thing for you to do. How far is it to the telegraph office? <laughs> Great Gildersleeve will be right back. When you shop tomorrow, be sure to pick up a pint or quart bottle of Kraft Salad Oil. It's the wonderful new oil for your homemade salad dressings, your cooking, your baking. The first salad oil ever offered for your home use by Kraft. Remember, it's lighter bodied because it's super fine. Lighter bodied to blend perfectly with other ingredients. Don't wait to try Kraft Salad Oil. It's lighter bodied. It's super fine. Uncle Morris. Yes, what is it, my dear? We have news for you, Mr. Gildersleeve. News? What happened? What's up? Leroy, don't be pushy. This doesn't concern you. Yes, it does, Unky. This is for everybody. Oh? We finally decided on names for the twins. You have? Holy cow, it's about time. Leroy. <laughs> so many people helped us out, and we're very grateful. All our friends were wonderful. And here are the names we selected, Unky. Rhonda Lynn and Rhonda Linda. Rhonda Lynn and Rhonda Linda. Hey, not bad. Why, George, I couldn't have thought of better names myself. You say, let's see how the twins like them. Oh, Ronnie. Linda. <laughs> How do you like that? They're squawking about the name for already. What if they called you Leroy? <laughs> Never mind. They're beautiful names. Thanks to all of you for helping out. You're real friends. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Nancy White, with music by Robert Armbruster. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Dick Trenner, Jeanette Nolan, Joe Forte, Lee Keel, Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Next time you raid the icebox or sit down for a between-meal snack, don't forget to add a little craft prepared mustard to that cold meat you eat or that sandwich you make. For when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. There are two kinds of Kraft mustard, salad mustard with that delicately spiced mild flavor and Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both kinds on hand. Then for extra zest in meat or cheese, just add a little mustard and you'll add a lot of tang. Buy Kraft's prepared mustard. Don't miss the Falcon each Sunday over this station. Check your newspaper for time of broadcast and listen next Sunday as the Falcon solves... The Case of the Unwelcome Wife. Laugh with Groucho Marx. He 